J.K. Today is Thursday, so you already know what it is. It's Tackle Thursday with J.K. And today, I tackled the question or the statement. I tackled the statement supporting what you don't fully understand. And, and what, I, what I came from from this was I was coming from an angle as a man, you know, when, um, you know, just interacting and dealing with a relationship like with my wife. Um, or if you're not married, just as men, you know, dealing with your, you know, working with your significant other. How, you know, as a man... We, we can try our best, right? I try my best to, to, to understand my wife in different circumstances, different situations. Um, but my understanding sometimes can be limited because I'm a man and she's a woman. So though I may strive to sympathize and try my best to empathize, there are a lot of times like I don't fully, fully understand how she's feeling, what she means, her perspective. And, and many times I think as a man, um, I have made the mistake, or we as men make the mistake with our spouses or our significant others, and we allow uh, the lack of understanding that we may have when it comes to our wife in certain situations or our significant others in certain situations, we, are, we allow our lack of understanding to become barriers to where we be like, man, I don't get what she's talking about, so forget it, right? We don't even try to understand or we don't even try to support, and despite us not fully understanding our spouses or, or our significant others all the time we still must support them we still must be there for them the best way we can but but also we must ask our our wives our significant others we must ask them what does support look like for them because many times i'm like yeah i'm supporting my wife i'm supporting her you know while she um you know uh you know breastfeed take care of the kids uh different aspects and that was my idea of supporting but but and so when I tried to support in the way that I thought I should, that's where conflict and issues still arose, right? But but when I asked Brittany, hey, what does support look like for you? What 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 do you need me to do? And she would say, I need you to do this. I need you to do this. This is what I need. This is what I'm looking for. When I say support, I might not understand fully. I might not agree, but I still got to support. So 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 that was what the you know basically the why I was coming from and tackling supporting what you don't fully understand and, and so today man I got a special guest this the hey it doesn't matter who come on my show my uh, podcast live or whatever they're not gonna be spe- more special than this person right here right so y'all I'm about to bring on my baby mama right yeah I got a baby mama all right I'm about to bring on, on my lifetime girlfriend and my wife all right Brittany Kellum. I'm about to bring on, right? So she's going to join me. All right, so let me go ahead and add her. Okay, I just sent it to you. So we're waiting on my baby mama to get on. Yo! <laughs> Dang! <laughs> oh! Wait, hey. I don't got the bonnet on. Hey, nah, like, I didn't, I didn't just do something more, you feel me? And you didn't came and just laid on them real Stop. quick. I took the bonnet off real quick. Hold on, we about to go on a date. I'm going to put it back on and take this unit off as soon as I'm done. Damn. And put it on camera. Now, for the interview, the bonnet leaves. But when the interview over, by the time I get to the crib, the bonnet the, game. The bonnet going to be on. But, it, but it's all good. Game. Nah, but 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 appreciate you. Um, you know, Brittany, I, I appreciate you coming on. You know, you you're gonna be the special guest, like most special guest ever. Uh you you welcome anytime. You can interrupt my lives if you want to, right? Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit, but it, it, it's true though. So so but now nah, real talk, man. So today, you know, we're tackling um, you know, the the idea um of supporting mothers with breastfeeding. All right, and um, I know that it's 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 something that you're passionate about doing um, and speaking about and talking about uh, it. Um, so you know, just started out like you know, before we get to the breastfeeding aspect, like how important do you feel that it is for a husband or a significant other, a man, to support their spouse, to support their wife or or their significant other? Like how how important that is is that to you? Um, I think it's very important um, just because breastfeeding in general is hard work. Um, I know recently I shared how, like, you know, breastfeeding is basically like a full-time job on top of another full-time job. 
But so oftentimes, even if we weren't addressing breastfeeding, it's important for your significant others to, to support us as women, um, regardless, in whatever area of life it is. I know for you, Jeremy, it's not that um, just that you're supporting me right now through breastfeeding. You're also supporting me through postpartum. And this is new for me because I didn't have a postpartum. I wouldn't consider I had a postpartum experience after Jeremy. Um, I feel like, you know, but ha going having a baby in the midst of a pandemic, um, it shifted some things. It shifted some outlooks. It shifted some perspectives. So just having you supportive and just being understanding that maybe I'm not all the way myself is very important. Um, you know, we, if we look back just in our relationship period, there's been times that it's been very important that you as a man um, be supportive to me. If we go back to the beginning, when I didn't even know whether I could have kids, I needed your support, you know. And because I had that support, here we are, two kids. Sure, why I pause, but no, um, I said, just want to say. No, I was just reminding what did you my, said. Did my phone pause? Yeah, it did. So you say, um, you say, uh, and you might, you might have to probably use the um, maybe your your like your telephone internet um, being up there. Um, but but if it you, you still you good right now though. Okay. You, you should, good. But um, so you said that um, you talked about how even when. We didn't think when we didn't know if we could have kids. Um, and you said that you know you came to me, letting me know that hey, there that we may not be able to have kids. Um, how important that was for me to support you. Yes. Yeah. So I was I was saying you continue to explain on that. Um. Just okay. Um. Just being on that roller coaster. Um. Not knowing if, you know, I could conceive. I had 27 fibroids at that time. And I just needed your support through that. You know, reassuring me uh, regardless that, you know, God has something great for us if we became parents. God has something great for us if we didn't. Yeah. But at the same time, you reassured me that God was going to give us our heart desires. And so, and that's what we stand on, regardless of what we're pursuing. Um, we believe that he's going to give us the things that we've been asking and we request to him. And so it's just important um, just being there for your significant other, because being a woman is hard. It's hard. Um, you know, just the even thought of, you know, dealing with infertility, dealing with fibroids, dealing with cysts dealing with endometriosis, just so many things that we go through as women um, to then conceive the child and then feeding the child is a whole nother journey in itself. So I would just say it's very important. And Did you do it again? Okay. I just want each person to make sure that, you know, they support their spouse. They ask their spouse, what is it that you're looking for me to do? What love language are you looking for me to give you? Um, you know, for me, I'm affirmation. I'm like, Jeremy, I need to hear you say this, yes. you know, regardless of how many times. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. No, I definitely I think, like you said, like, just like our journey, um, the different, I can go on and on to how, how you have supported me. Um, you know, but um, I know stand on topic and, and what we're talking about, but but just even what you talked about, like being at that point where we didn't know this is like when we was dating, it was like 21 years old, so it was like we was old, you know, like um, you know, older young adults or whatever, we like kids still. And you come into me and, and, and telling me that, um, you didn't know if we, you know, when we got married. And we tried to have kids. We didn't know if we could have kids. And so that right there at like 21, I'm not fully understand. Like I understand, but I'm like, I had to like grasp like, hold on. Like, yeah. I like with kids in the future and you telling me that we might not. Right. And so as a man, I think we have to process like 
our feelings about it, maybe not directly like to you, because we still, you know, we got to be, you know, supportive and, and keep that strong because you're going through a lot of things. But I think in our own personal time, like we still got to pr- process what's actually going on. Um, and though I might not fully understand and, and, and it might may seem unfamiliar, I was like, man, you know what? Like, I love you for who you are. Like, I wasn't trying to, I wasn't dating you because you can give me kids. Like, because at that time, I wasn't they didn't think about kids. I was dating you because, you know, you was a baddie. Uh, you you are yes, and you showing you know, up on this thing. You love God. You, but you love God first, but, you know what I'm saying? So that's most important. But you was a baddie, so that's like bonus, you know what I'm saying? And then, but more important, like, you was dope inside. So when you came to me, you know, after what, a year or so dating and, and mentioned that, it was just like, hey, like, I'm going to support you. We in it together. And then just at the end of the day, I knew that he was going to still pray and keep faith that uh, I was going to bless us with kids, which we did. All right. Um, and so to kind of narrow it down um, into the support we're talking about, right? We, we're talking about, you know, supporting mothers with uh, breastfeeding. Um, so, I mean, first question, just like, how did you find out about uh, breastfeeding? Um, I actually, of course, breastfeeding, um, our culture has been breastfeeding if we go back all the way to our ancestors, but coming to, bre- um, deciding to breastfeeding, deciding to breastfeed, it came, honestly, it came from my doctor's suggestion. Um, one day we were talking and, um, it was while I was pregnant with Jeremy, she told me that um, some of my fibroids had came back. And just to give some of you who don't know my story, um, when I'm saying I dealt with infertility, it was due to having 27 fibroids. So once I um, was pregnant with our first child, um, my doctor told me that some of the fibroids had returned. And, you know, that sent me in a panic. We'll have to tell that story for a different day. But I was just like, she was like, your biggest thing is that you can't stress. Because if you do know anything about fibroids, they do grow based on like hormone and different estrogen levels. And so stress can definitely make them grow. So I had to just give that to God. And so um, this, she had told me like, you know, and after you have your baby, um, you should consider breastfeeding. And I was just like, well, I know that's. I was like, you know, maybe it's good nutrition for the baby. She was like, not just that, but it'll actually shrink your fibroids. And I was like, oh, wow. And so I made the decision then. That was the first time I was just like, you know, I'm definitely going to um, attempt to breastfeed. And so once I have had my baby, had Jeremy, uh, me and you, you know, we went to classes. But it really was also encouragement to have um to breastfeed when i found out it actually helps you heal from a cesarean due to us you know having the fibroids removed previously i then had to have a c-section um with both of our kids so um just to explain how it helps with fibroids basically it um, reduces the amount of estrogen your body produces, so that prevents them from growing. And then when in regards to the C-section, after you have a baby, your uterus grows. And so it takes like 12 weeks for your uterus to even shrink back down to its size. And so by breastfeeding, it actually speeds up the process to like maybe six weeks, it takes your uterus to shrink back down. Gotcha. Okay, so um, and, and so we and, and that's a lot. So I'm a I'm a I'm a dive in that. But okay. so for the for the fellas, right? So all of this that Brittany is saying, right? It it I don't fully understand. Like you know what I'm saying? So I got you. and then now because you know three years into the, three years into <laughs> the big game, you know I got a little experience. But bro, when 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 she said. When Brittany was like, hey, we're going to some breastfeeding classes. And I was like, okay, right? So we get to the class, we sit down, they pop on this, they pop on this video. 
So, fellas, I'm watching the video. Normalize breastfeeding, Jeremy. Right? Hey, we normalize it. I'm just letting them know. You feel me? To get them, let them know what it's about, right? So, we watching the video, and that saying, you no, know, it was just like a lot of aerials. Like, it was just like all out. And I was, I looked to my left and right, like, am I supposed to normalize breastfeeding, Jeremy? I was like, you know, and so it was, it was, it was an eye opener for me as a man because, like she said, as a woman, she didn't grow around seeing that. I, me, me or Brittany wasn't breastfed. I didn't grow grow up seeing, you know, my 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 uh, you know, family do it a lot. So it wasn't it wasn't popular. Um, and so it wasn't until Brittany brought it to me and I really seen it and I understood it. And so I'm all about normalizing it too. I'm all about, you know, um, supporting and not, not shaming. Um, and it really, even though I don't fully understand, like I say, I understand more. Um, I'm all about, I'm all about supporting, right? And so you talked about some of the, the benefits, like that, um, you know, helps with cesarean, your, your recovery. Uh, it, it helps, you said, shrinking. Um, and they should help shrink the fibroids. Okay, it helps shrink the fibroids. Um, any other any other benefits that you? I mean, there's there's a, a numerous benefits to yeah. breastfeeding, but those were just my reasoning um, is why I chose that path. Gotcha. And I just want to just make sure I leave this disclaimer too, Jeremy, just because you know I've made sure I've been an advocate um, for this past week for Black Breastfeeding Week. Um, I was not shaming formula. I am formula fed. Um, I just was making sure that I bring awareness to breastfeeding due to the disparities in our community of knowing more about the choice you can make and the benefits of breastfeeding. So definitely, definitely. Like, like you, you just hit on the head. Like we're just, we're support. Like you said, some on one of your posts, um, got to go follow Brittany K, right? Uh, read a blog and all, right? So, um, you said that a fed baby is a happy baby, yeah. And, and however, um, and that's one thing we learned as parents is you have to do what you have to do for your child. So, yes, you may read a book and they see they do one, two, three, don't do four, five, six, but if four, five, six kind of works for your kid then, you know, then that's what you do. That's kind of like what we learned. So like you said, if formula works for someone, um, then you do that. Um, but if you are curious, curious about, uh, you know, breastfeeding, you, we wanted to, well, you know, you, me supporting you, and I'm all for it, wanted to bring that to light and say, hey, like, let's normalize uh, breastfeeding um, amongst all mothers, especially, you know, like you said, specifically advocating because, uh Black breastfeeding um week last week. I mean it was the whole month. Last month. So um definitely. So so if you if you got like mothers out there that they are breastfeeding right now or they're pregnant and they they are thinking like, man, how am I gonna produce this milk? How am I gonna produce this milk? What are strategies that you use and, and that they could use that can increase their milk production? Um, so I am no lactation specialist, um, consult your doctor, consult your OBGYN. I can only tell you, um, excuse me, what worked for me. And so I'm not sure if one day I was on Pinterest. This is while I was pregnant with our, our son. And I saw this, um, one of the, the blogs that had came up was like Gatorade increased my breast milk. So I was like, Gatorade. And so I tried it and it increased my breast milk. Tell, so, tell, them, tell them what uh what type of Gatorade, what flavor? A blue frost Gatorade. Blue frost. Now I don't even blue like frost blue frost Gatorade. Gatorade. I, I cannot before. lie to you. They will say um many articles will tell you that no there's no test that has proved it, but I can only tell you that it works for me. Okay. Um, Blue Frost Gatorade. Every time I got ready for a feeding, I could feel my breast let down after um, I would drink a Gatorade. Another thing, this helped um, with um, me breastfeeding and helped with my milk production was flat seeds. And I have a, because I'm like, what is flat seeds? I wouldn't have known. 
trust me. This is flax seeds. I get them from Publix. I'm sure Kroger's or any like you know grocery store will have them, but they're flax seeds, and I put them in in like my water. I'll put them in my Gatorade. Um, another thing I'm heavily, um, and studies have showed that flax seeds increase your breast milk, um, is oatmeal. Those are probably my top three things. I eat oatmeal every single day. I eat a bowl of oatmeal. Fellas, um, uh, ladies and, uh, gentlemen, like when I say that she eats oatmeal every single day, like every, every single, single day. day. When I'm in a grocery store, I went today on my lunch break. Don't tell you, like, when I, you know, I'm teaching from home. So on my lunch break, I ran to uh, Target, right? So I see, hey, get some um, oatmeal, right? Oatmeal every single day. All right. So um, definitely, I'm an advocate. You know, I see the production, you know. Um, so definitely that oatmeal. Um, her flavor, apple cinnamon, but I don't know. You might like something else, but definitely oatmeal. And just um, channeling. Um, a comment that was said, yes, it's definitely hard work. Whew. It is a lot of work. Yeah. But I will say the bond that I have with, you know, they only want you. <laughs> you got the, you got the food. Um, I do enjoy that bond. I know with Jeremy, I breastfed him for 21 months. I don't know how long I'll go with Jayla, only because she's ready for table food. If she could eat a steak right now, Jerry, don't do it. Um, if she could eat a steak right now, she would. Um, so, you know, I don't know how long me and her our journey will be. I'm praying that we at least go 12 months. But I will say that it is a great bond. So I just wanted to address, I saw that comment, Jerry. Not that, but that's... Uh... As Deborah and um, K. Rich, uh, that amazing oh, stuff. Florida. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, they've been right. We, I knew y'all was gonna get married. I, 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 I knew y'all was. Jeremy um, told me that too. <laughs> yeah, man, amazing, amazing um, couple. Um, but yeah, like so, so fellas, like if you let me plug this in. So fellas, if you support, like when you supporting your your significant other or your spouse, and um, you see that bond that. Your, your wife or your significant other has with your your kids is it's nothing to get offended by right you, you know it's nothing to to feel some type of way because they they want them all the time like they're food uh right they like hey if you don't jeremy like they like that that you ain't got it i don't all right the moment, <laughs> like, mommy has it. but also i would say this too fellas the mistake i made is that I, I I struggled in support with that because I was like, well, they only want you, right? So when they're crying or when when they would get cranky, I'm quick to pass pass them off to her because I'm like, well, I can't I can't pacify them, I can't feed them, and so though we can't feed them, fellas, we still could support our wives or our significant others during this time. And so whether, you know, especially in public, whether you, you better get that cover, you better get that sheet, right? In church, I had it. Man, well, so not that. everyone covers, Jeremy. Oh, well, uh, I'm sorry. Let me, thank you. I stand correct. If your spouse wants you to cover, or significant other wants you to cover, that is a way that you could support her. Um, you know, because I think that is a maybe a vulnerable time. And, and it's a great bond. So, you know, that's the way that I found that I could support um, Brittany in. And like you said, not everybody covered. You don't need, you know, you don't have to. And that's part of normalizing. So I appreciate you correcting me um, on that one. Uh, and so do you have like any, I see you got the flat seeds. You talked about your Gatorade. Um, do you have any other tools or gadgets you want to show, you know, to everyone that may be watching like that? you? Um, like? Yes. And also... Um, I just wanted to piggyback off of what you just said. You know, if she does want to be covered, help her feel comfortable, cover her. If she doesn't want to be covered, help her feel comfortable that what she's doing is, be, um, you know, giving your baby proper nutrition, the nutrition that she prefers, the method she prefers, um, and just be supportive in that. Help her stay um, hydrated. You know, with me, it's very important that you drink at least a gallon of water 
of my day. And that's what sometimes I struggle with that. But the more water you drink, the more breast milk you'll be able to produce. A majority of breast milk is just water. And so just helping her stay hydrated um, is just another way. Um, Helping her wash the breast pump. Because to feed the baby, pump, and have to turn around and wash all the bottles, all the pump parts, um, it's a lot. Um, So those are just other ways that you can just be supportive. Um, And even, even if she's not breastfeeding, if she's just formula feeding, um, being supported by getting the, helping to get the bottle ready. You know, I do know sometimes the baby does want that bond with the mom, but there's still ways that men can be supportive. And I know um, with breastfeeding, it makes it a little easier on the man, especially at night, because, you know, when we're waking up for feedings, Jeremy's... <sighs> <laughs> call it, call it them home. Hey, but look, hey, hey, but listen. Okay, look, because I'm, I'm gonna keep it real, right? Because I think that you know, um, I can't be you know talking or trying to help someone um, if I'm not honest. So JK, like with JK, like I'll probably get my like maybe like a D. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, 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 like that sleep. I'm, I'm sleeping through calling hall. Um, I do got a funny story when we was in the hospital when we first had him, but I ain't gonna share that right now. Um, but um, maybe at the end or so. Uh, but no, what, share it now. You want me to share? Okay, so I will share it real quick. So, and um, this is just about supporting your significant other, like while they're feeding. So, so um, we were. This was like day one, I think. Day one or day two at the hospital with my with our son Jeremy, right? So, um, so she was, you know, nursing and she was singing a song, right? Trying to, uh, trying to put, get Jeremy to go to sleep, trying to put little JK to sleep, right? Little Jeremy to sleep. So mind you, I'm over there sleeping on the, um, on the little cot over there and I'm listening to the song too. And that's saying, no, I ended up falling asleep. So in my mind, I'm like, man, that was a good son. Like, it worked. It put me to sleep. So I know it put JK to sleep. So the next day, Brittany was up, her and JK, she's nursing. So I was like, hey, Brittany, um, hey, sing that song again from last night because it, it, it put him to sleep. She was like, boy, it didn't put him to sleep. It put you to sleep. So, like, I was <laughs> asleep. I was hot. To her. I had so, just had a C-section. I was hot. <laughs> Hey, so she was, you know, that wasn't me showing support, Phillips, because I was sleeping while they both stood, stayed up, you know. So I think with us, I think with Jayla, I know I do a better job. I'm not gonna give myself an A, but I, I say like a B, like you know, two K. They, I give us a plus. You know what I'm saying? Because I think I, I'm doing a better job now. But like I say, fellas, man, learn from me. Um, that you might not understand everything, but you know, saying we we still could find ways to support. Um, and so. Okay, so someone, you know, I know watching, you know, uh, reading your, your blogs and your posts, you talk about how you store your milk. You put it in the freezer and different things. Um, so how long does this milk typically last? Um, so in the refrigerator, um, I do not leave it in there longer than a day um, in the refrigerator. Um, staying outside in room temperature, I don't do it longer than like three to four hours. Once I put it in the freezer, it can last up to a year. And so right now in the freezer, I have approximately like 4,000 ounces. And that's from like, I was pumping heavily at the beginning. Um, And so I have stored that and I haven't even used any of that stash. It has filled up a freezer. And so I know I have to use some of that by February. February I'll be here, you know, before we know it. But I keep trying to see, like, if my milk production is going down, um, whether I will start to go into that stash. Yeah. Okay, then. Great, great. Um, So, okay. uh, I know. Let me see if we got any questions. Um, uh, Feel free to. I see Kevin and Deborah. Y'all love the oatmeal. Um, 
And then I see uh, y'all love the Gatorade too. Um, so if y'all got like any questions uh, for for Brittany, um, for myself, um, definitely you can you can put that in. And, and I know Brittany, you got some. So as they may be typing some questions in, you 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 have some questions from some DMs and, and people reaching out to you. So go ahead and um, you can read the question. Mm -hmm. Just um, okay, we got one from uh, from Raven. All right, so it says, did you have to change your diet while breastfeeding? Um, yeah, I did. Um, I didn't eat fish. Um, it just told me that it had like high, high um ounces of like mercury. The same thing they told us, you know, while we were pregnant. Um, which I'm not even sure if you really can't, but I'm just like so a stickler to the rules and i and i don't want anybody to quote me to be like oh my god i'm breastfeeding i eat fish that might be perfectly fine um when you've just had a road of infertility like me by the time you get to the crossroads you just like you know i'm just gonna follow the rules to the t and so i do not eat fish i i rarely eat um dairy because it just makes um them gassy um, even though lately to make myself feel better in the pandemic, sometimes, you know, I read my Bible and then get some ice cream <laughs> and binge watch movies, <laughs> um, but I rarely, um, eat ice creams. So those were really the top two things. And I know, you know, in regards to alcohol, no, I don't drink, but I do know that you can drink alcohol and like do a method called like pump and dump. Mm -hmm. So I don't really know that method, but you can definitely look into it. Yes, <laughs> you can look into it and find out ways because there are definitely ways, you know, to still socially drink and then just pump and dump it. So, yep. All right. So, um, yep. Uh, so she said, how do you continue breastfeeding during postpartum? What up, big sis? So that is hard. So that is why, of course, I'm going to tell people now how I got 3,000, 4,000 ounces in a freezer. And that was because at the beginning, I had an oversupply. With JK, I had an oversupply. That means they come, to, I nursed them every time they were hungry, lunchtime, dinner time, snack time, breakfast time. And then I still would pump in between and would have 30 ounces. Well, with everything that I have been going through, you know, with postpartum, some of the anxiety, some of the stress, um, sometimes being sad, um, you know, crying, it's a lot. Um, my milk production has went down. So I, I'm i not producing that. So if I went from producing 30 ounces an extra day to my goal now is five. Um, you know, and that's just the realization of it. And, you know, I prayed about it even yesterday. Um, I decided to last week I'm, I'm renting. Did I go out? Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. I'm now renting the hospital's pump because their pump is it like basically helps you. It has a better suction than the regular pumps. And when I say that, meaning, I'll show you. So, this is the pump that I originally had, and it's the Medela pump. And so, when I first start, when I first realized I had postpartum, when my doctor told me, I had let her know, like, I seen some of my milk production go down. And so, I was using this pump. So, then I was like, maybe it's the pump. Because, you know, at the beginning of finding out I had postpartum, I was kind of like in denial. And so I got another pump. So the second pump I got was the Lansino. Um, I do recommend both of these pumps. I say this one is stronger. The Mandela pump is stronger. But this one is quiet. So if you're having a pump in the nighttime and you don't want to wake your baby, I like this one. Because the noise. But with um, trying to breastfeed and having postpartum, because I'm declaring, you know, 
what I feed is what's going to grow. So I'm not feeding postpartum. So even though thoughts and different things come to my mind, I cast those things down and I'm going to keep trying to nurse my baby. I'm going to keep trying to produce this milk because this is what I desire to do. And so um, last week I went to the hospital and I'm renting their pump. So this is the pump that they have and it's a stronger suction. And so I did see that it was able to pull more milk than the other pump so I'm gonna like basically pump every two to three hours for the next two weeks and then see if I can just go back to using my regular pump now now when you say um you could just touch on this um so when you say stronger right I know what you mean right so uh some fellas might not know or even some women may not know. like just going to greater detail a little bit about like what did you mean by like a stronger pump um, so basically, there's no pool to get the milk out like your baby, but there's pumps designed where you basically hook yourself up to the pump to pr to pump out the milk. Because there's some women that don't nurse at all um, to the breast where they just pump and then feed their baby the bottle. That's breastfeeding to me too. So um, when you hook yourself up to the pump, depending on the pump and the um how much it can suction out and so when i didn't know that postpartum was in my stress level was affecting my milk i assumed that it was the pump so i kept going to another pump trying to fix the problem and it was me gotcha uh, i think i paused can you, can you hear me can you hear me I can't hear can you. you. All right. Yeah, I can hear you now. I can't hear you. All right. Yeah. Okay. Got you. Right. So you said what? So it, no, I can't hear so you. It wasn't um, like you said. It, it wasn't. It wasn't the uh, like you said. You had to realize that it wasn't a pump that. Um, yeah. Um, because was. stress level can affect your breastfeeding journey, and so that is <laughs> why I'm just trying to take control over postpartum. And not let postpartum take control over me. Gotcha. And so you you share this like this slogan, right? So because we what is the 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 traditional is what supply and demand, right? But with breastfeeding, it was like the opposite, right? Yes. Many people will tell you that breastfeeding is supply and demand. Um, to me, breastfeeding is demand equals supply. So the more I'm demanding my body to produce the more my body is supplying because it's basically registering to my body, oh, she needs more milk. And so when what happened with also not just postpartum slowed down my milk production, but I sleep trained um, Jayla to sleep for eight hours earlier than I should have. So when she was sleeping for eight hours and wasn't coming to eat, it, my body was like, oh, she didn't need, really need that much milk. So it's it's kind of like, I'm a well, uh, uh, but it's like the user uh, principle. It kind of like, what you don't use, you lose. So yes. If you, uh -huh. you, if you use it, it will continue to, you know, uh, at a certain time, maybe not as much, but it's um, for you, yes. So, you do, right? um, so yeah, definitely. So now I'm pumping, and even though nothing's really coming out, I'm yeah. still doing it. I'm still coming to the pump every three hours because I'm trying to get my body to register. Oh, she needs more milk. She never. She didn't have enough milk. And so, like, I, I want to say, you know, I'll let you know how much I appreciate you, but, you know, I, I want to let, you know, tell the world, right? Uh, uh, but, no, nah, I, I appreciate you. I salute you because, like, fellas, ladies, um, this is, that's a full-time job. Um, and so, the fact, and it takes commitment um, because I can see, like, it get, it's so easy to say, ah, oh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm going to just stop, right? Because, like, like, Rich he said, like, you're, you're feeding the child, they're done, you're pumping, right? Clean the pumps, 
then by the time all that is over, they're ready to either kind of like, when do you get personal time, right? Or when do you, you know, so it is it, so much. And so, man, I appreciate you, Brittany. I really, really do. Um, for all you do and for what you do for our kids, um, because I know that, uh, you know, what you're doing is a sacrifice. Um, and you're sacrificing your body, your time, yourself, um, you know, for for the, for the kids and for me, you know what I'm saying? So I appreciate that. All right. And um, uh, I definitely did want to open it up to, you know, anybody else, you know, like at the end, towards the end of the um Tackle Thursday with JK, you know, we do a segment um, called Tell Them, Tell Them, where, you know, you can kind of access anything that y'all want to access. Um, you can ask Brittany. Um, you can ask myself. Um, it could be pertaining to this, about what's well, to breastfeeding. It could be pertaining to supporting each other, um, marriage, having kids, whatever y'all want to access, y'all can access. Um, and then, you know, if, if no one feels led to, um, then maybe you can read you know, a question off of, of what of the list you got from your DM. So I'll see if uh, anybody got a question. Um, so let me ask you this. You got a question for me? No. Yeah, you got a question. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, I'll say this. Okay, I got a question for you. What is the best thing about being a mother to you? Well, the best thing, um, just having two, well, in my case, two, two broke best friends, you know, um, just watching them grow, being able to pour into them, to invest into them, um, just, you know, just watching, honestly, for me, being a mom is just watching God had answered a prayer that the enemy told me wasn't going to be my story. How many times the doctors told me, uh, I'm going to be honest with you, you probably are not having kids. I'm going to be honest with you, um, you're infertile. I'm going to be honest with you that you probably won't be a mom. So just having someone um, call me mom is just, I see God all by himself. Like, I'm not trying to over-spiritualize Tackle Thursday, but I'm just keeping it all no, the way so real that that's yeah easy as I can put it that you know when Job said my ears have heard about you but now my eyes have seen you um, this isn't something that I my mom told me about Jesus my dad told me about Jesus I saw Jesus for myself because you know if we tell that story of a doctor saying that I had a polyp to going back 30 days later and they saying they don't see no polyp, that it's a baby. That's, I don't know how else to look at it, but that was him all by himself. So Not that's definitely. why it's like, oh, me being a mom, that's all I got. Definitely. I mean, sure, you know, God, welcome here. Um, I mean, because ultimately, man, that's really the, the goal. Um, like a topic that we, you know, tackle, I tackle, if I'm going to myself or me and a guest, we tackle like tonight, we tackle this one to glorify God, you know, and to be able to bless others, um, you know, through our conversation and, 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 and be a light to the world and, and be able to impact somebody's life, um, you know, in a positive way. Um, so that's, that's really all about though. Um, so, okay then, um, do, so do we have any, any questions? Questions. You sure you ain't got no question for me? Dang. It's out. I can't hear you. Me. Go ahead. Hey, um, read a question off your, from your DM. How do you like being a dad, Jeremy? How do I like being a dad? Wow. Uh, no, nah, man. I, and how know, many I more do you two. want? Okay, so that's a two-part question. All right, let me answer the first one. Okay. All right. So, um, how do I love being a dad? Um, right. So, I, I mean, I love, it. I love it, man. When you know, walking through the door and hearing this man talking about dad, 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 or you know, daddy, you know, and now having these full conversations and he telling me, you know, like today when I went to practice, he like, all right, dad, dad, love you. Have a blessed have day. A blessed day. Right. Have a blessed day. So, 
you know, that right there, man, that, that lets me know, like, he gets it in. And I think just, like, I want him to um, be one that, that shows love, you know. And, and so to see him walking around and not even being unction or not even being coerced to tell his grandparents, you know, I, 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 I love you, you know what I'm saying, telling your mom and daddy, I love you. Even today, like talking to my mom on FaceTime, like I love you. Like so, it's it's I I want him to walk with love in his heart, and so seeing him do that is is it, it really blesses me. And um, with Jayla, man, you know, cause it's hey, them with girls the hit different. They hit, <laughs> hey, them girls hit different, man. So um, just to see her get big. And um, I'm, I'm really trying not to go fast forward all the way to she 19, 20, she dating. Um, you know, um, I'm not trying to go that far, but, man, it's, it's a blessing with both. You said how many I want more? Um, I see, hey, fellas, like anytime <laughs> your spouse, your significant other. I'm just kids, playing. That they want more kids. Like, you know, they really want more kids. Right, but I'm like, no, nah, I can't do postpartum again. We good, hey, <laughs> we hey, good. But, you know, two so, out. You know, I'm, I'm good with two. You know, I'm good with two. I'm good with two. I ain't even gonna lie, I'm good. We out. I'm so uh, we might revisit that down the road, but right you know, now, I'm, I'm, I'm good it's with postpartum. Two. Yeah, I mean, you know, and, and I think for me, that's what I think as a man when I'm looking. Like for me, that was the probably the most difficult. Thing, um, just going through, especially like, cause going to the through the to the through the first one, you know, you don't really know what to expect, and so like now getting, you know, getting pregnant for the second time, and then knowing that we had to have a C-section, um, you know, which is nothing wrong with that. Um, that should be normalized, you know, yeah. and um, it definitely should be. And knowing though, seeing what you know, the 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 how hard or the journey that that you as a woman have to take um you know to have kids and, and everything so i think that's hard for me because there's nothing i can do but support fellas and so um i think really for me i i just wouldn't want you to have to go through nine months you know and, and xyz um but uh but yeah man we, i mean bless and um, I'm, I think I'm good with two though. But I see you hitting though. I'm, I'm gonna look. Out. I'm watching for you though. I, I got my head on the swivel. Um, but uh, but definitely though, man. I mean, if uh, I'm gonna see if we got any questions. Okay, cool. All right, good question. Here we go. So, how has BK Brittany, you know, uh, postpartum affected me? How are you able to help her when she is having moments? So, I think um, the postpartum it has affected me. I would say, I I didn't understand at first. Um, I didn't understand, and I remember when Brittany came to me, um, and she, like months after having Jayla, she was like, "Hey, like, have you researched like what postpartum is?" And I was like, "Nah," because in my mind, I'm like, "Oh, I, I know what it is. It's like you're going through, you know, these different emotions. I'm coming from it from a man perspective, right?" I didn't fully understand. So when I when I went and researched it and looked it up and I started to read the different stories that men were saying that their wives were going through and what it really was about, I felt so bad because I thought I was doing good as a husband. I'm like, man, I'm supporting her. I'm here for her. But I realized like I really wasn't there like I probably, like I needed to. Um, and it was kind of like, Dang, I can't even get mad. I shouldn't get mad, right? Um, during these times, because my wife is going through something where day by day she may be trying to figure out how is she feeling that day. Like where where we as men, like we don't have kids, so we don't go through a physical change. We don't go through an emotional change. We don't we don't uh, deliver a whole nother child. So who I am right now is like who I am before my kids, like emotionally, but. As, as a woman, you go through so many changes and you're one way today and then tomorrow you might be another day and then the, the, the third day you might be back on the emotions you was the first day. And as a man, I did, as a husband, I didn't understand that. And, um, and so that really bothered me. 
because I'm like, you know, I'm getting frustrated. I'm getting upset. Um, but then I had, like I said, I felt really bad that I was doing that because it wasn't like she was doing it on purpose. It wasn't like, you know, she could control it in a sense, because if she could, she will just be like, nope, postpartum, you know, um, get these emotions out of here. Um, so I had to truly, truly like understand that. And then as far as like, how am I uh, able to help her in her moments? Um, just understanding that sometimes she just want to sit there and just be in her own space. Like, you know, we might be trying to do something. We might be trying to clean a room. We might be trying to, and she might just say, Jay, I just need a moment. And, and I have to understand that. I have to understand that maybe we did schedule to clean the room or to get ready to go somewhere, but maybe something, an emotion hit her that made her say, I just got to take a moment. And so I got to be okay with that. I got to understand. She might say, Hey Jay, I'm going to the bathroom. And then I look at my watch and I'm like, hello, like, I'm in the, I'm in here with two kids by myself. It's been like 30 minutes. I have to understand that she needed that time by herself. So, um, like I said, I'm not perfect. I'm not no expert. But I see the mistakes that I made, and I see the things that I'm trying to correct day by day. Um, so that, that was a very, very good question. Very, very, very good question. Um, what's up, Celeste? Hey. Um, so, yeah, so I mean, I, I don't, you know, this has been real good, man. Um, I, I pray it's been very informative um, for, for, for you all, men and women. Um, and, and, and man, you know, invite people to rewatch it or share it with people, um, that may didn't, you know, didn't get to see it or whatnot. Um, so I do want to leave you with, uh, allow you to, um, you know, to leave some closing words, uh, for on Brittany on whatever you want to talk okay, about. Okay, I'm going to make this quick because you already know I don't keep my phone charged, so you know what it's about to do. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Um, no, I just want to say. For those who are going to try to breastfeed, um, you know, I'm wishing you well on your journey. I know that it's going to be hard work. There's going to be a lot of times that you're going to want to quit. Um, but I just want you, if this is something you really want to do, I pray that you just keep at it. Um, for those of you who may attempt to breastfeed and can't, um, know that there's nothing wrong with being formula fed. I was formula fed. Um, like we said at the beginning, um, a happy baby is a fed, um, fed baby and fed is best. Um, for those of you that are on the journey, um, like me and Jeremy were a few years ago of just conceiving in general, um, I'm wishing you well. I'm praying God's grace over your womb um, mm -hmm. because me and Jeremy have sat there. We have prayed many nights. I have cried and cried and cried and I, I seen him answer. So my prayers are for that as well. Definitely, definitely. Um, and also those that are going through postpartum, um, you know, just take it day by day. Um, that's all I can tell you that I'm doing. I found something to channel all my energy into. Um, no, every day I don't feel like getting dressed in all them clothes for my blog. Um, but you know, me and Jeremy been dressing alike for the decade we've been together and all I'm doing now is making our kids do it too. Um, and it's just me being true to me. And so it's just like, if you are experiencing postpartum, I pray that you dive into your word and that you do find something that you can channel all your energy into. Definitely. Well said. I mean, it's nothing for me to say. Um, you know, to come behind it. Um, just want to thank everybody that, that came and, um, and that supported us, um, that watched. Um, and like I say, if, if you, you know, you want to share this with your, your spouse, um, significant other, you got friends, you want to, you know, just have them, you know, share it with them. Um, just uh, really want to just normalize breastfeeding and, and support and just talk about how fellas, even though we don't fully understand all the time, We still can support our wives or significant others, um, you know, in every way possible, um, right? So, um, hey, man, I see we got a lot of I love yous in the night. So, I want to make sure we, we shot that back. We love all y'all. Y'all have a blessed and have a blessed weekend.
Yeah, we out.